Hey, it's Sauce, and today I want to talk about how to prepare for a backpacking trip. There's tons of logistics and research to consider before you head into the backcountry, and I want to share some things that I do every time I'm planning an extended backpacking trip, or even just a simple overnighter. Planning a backpacking trip can be one of the most difficult parts of the entire endeavor, in my opinion, especially when you don't know what to look for. Forget the hard hiking, possible animal encounters, bad weather. I think that the logistics is kind of what keeps most people from ever leaving their house. It's not that picking the trail is especially hard, I think it's just everything else. Especially when you're new, there are logistical challenges that you might not even know to prepare for before you go out on a backpacking trip. But it really doesn't have to be that hard. With every backpacking trip that I've planned, I've noticed a pattern of the things that I always check and I wanted to put that in a video for you to use as a guide next time you're planning a backpacking trip for yourself. I'll also link some of the resources that I frequently use in the description of this video. To make things logistically simpler, I've sort of broken this out into three different time periods. What I do a few months before a trip, what I do a few weeks before a trip, and finally what I do a few days before a trip. First up, we have all the things and all the logistics that I plan for a few months out. How many months kind of varies as we'll get into in a little bit. First, the fun part, choosing a trail or a route. This is where I ask myself, where do I want to hike? Usually I have some places in mind because of podcasts I've listened to or friends that I've recommended different places, um, but also doing a good old Google is a great place to find inspiration as well. Some of the places that I look to kind of get inspiration or decide maybe where I wanna hike are all trails. I know that might be frowned upon by some, but I think it's a great resource um, far out. As many through hikers are aware, Far Out has a bunch of awesome different maps. Sometimes I just pick sections of longer trails. Um, the Trek, I always read blogs and trip reports from different hikers and their experiences with different trails to see if it's something I might be interested in. Um, Backpackingroutes.com has a lot of awesome trails and you can filter by distance and location. So if you already have like a time period in mind, um, that's a really good way to find a trail that might fit your time off or where you live. All of those are really great resources, but if you're really new, you might not even know where to begin with that. So if that's the case, um, here's some things to consider when you're researching trails that you might wanna hike. First, consider the time of year with the location that you might wanna hike in. For example, the desert is usually better in the spring or the fall because it's not so hot, and the spring is even better usually because there's typically more water from all the snow that's melting from the winter. On the other hand, high elevation hikes are better in late July, August, September when the snow has melted and you're not gonna run into maybe some of those adverse conditions you might earlier in the season. Then there's the trail type to consider. Decide if you want endless views in the high alpine or long shady days in the trees. You might also wanna think about whether you wanna do a loop so it's convenient, you'll end up right back at your car or whatever method of transportation you use to get there, or do you want to do a point to point? Next, consider the location. Do you want to hike close to home or do you want to travel farther away? Then there's logistics to consider. Some hikes have a lot more logistics than others. Do you want something where you're going to have to plan a permit, plan a bus, plan travel there, or do you just want something easy where you can literally just show up at the trailhead and be ready to go? Also, traffic slash use amounts to consider. Do you want a really isolated experience where you're not going to run into many people or would you rather have more people around to maybe feel a little bit more comfortable, especially if this is your first time backpacking? Most of those are things you can look up when you're initially researching the trail that you're deciding to do. The next thing I always do a few months out before a backpacking trip is check if I need permits and secure them if I do. If I know that a hike needs permits, planning could start as far as six to nine months in advance depending on when permits are released. Some really popular permitted destinations release as early as January and February, and some are just self-issue permits at the trailhead. You'll have to research for the hike that you wanna do. If you're wanting to do something that you know is really popular, I honestly recommend researching permits as early as fall of the year before so you can make note of when they're released because a lot of permits actually sell out the day, the minute that they are opened up to the public. So 
I like to know when those permits dates are upcoming, like a few weeks in advance, so I can plan my permits, especially if you have to know your camp spots each night, and then that way I'm ready to go when the permits are open that morning. If the trail you're hoping to backpack is in a national park, you can pretty much count on some part of it being permitted. MPS.gov will have all the information for the park that you're hoping to backcountry camp at, and so definitely check out that resource to see what you'll need for the specific park you're looking into. Most permits for the summer are released in the spring, however, there are certain parks that will reserve a certain amount of walk-up permits, and so if you're flexible with your dates and itinerary, you might be able to still get permits even if they're sold out for the summer. If the area you're hoping to visit is a national forest or some other wilderness area, the National Forest Service website is where you'll want to go to check on regulations for permitting. If you're confused about any of the permitting or want to double check any of the questions that you might have, you can always call the ranger station that's nearest to the location you're trying to go to. The phone number will usually be listed on the page of the wilderness area you're trying to visit, and in my experience, rangers are always super helpful and really willing to answer any questions that they can. Keep in mind that on permit opening days, their phone lines will be extremely busy, so you definitely want to try and call either before the permits open or on a day that isn't quite as chaotic. If the trail you're doing has self-issue permits, that just means that at your trailhead most likely there will be some sort of box usually close to the beginning of the trail or right at the trailhead um, where you're required to fill out some information. This is usually just for record keeping purposes and so rangers can keep an eye on how many people are in the area. Um, it's important that you do fill this stuff out but it doesn't mean that you need to reserve anything in advance. Typically, they'll ask you where you're camping, expected exit and entry dates, just to kind of keep an eye on what areas are getting the most use, and also in case anything were to happen to you, they have a record of where you might be. They usually have a little transfer paper that you want to keep in the box, and then you keep the other piece with you to show that you have filled it out. In summary, self-issue permits don't usually mean that you have to reserve in advance, but you should fill them out when you get there. Next up, a few months out, I always check the regulations of the wilderness area that I'll be visiting. While you're looking up permit information is a good time to do this because all of the information is usually in the same place. Many areas have different rules from each other, so you'll want to check for every new wilderness area that you visit. However, please keep in mind that leave no trace principles apply everywhere. Just a few things you might want to look out for when you're checking wilderness area regulations are whether or not camping is allowed in every single area or if there are certain areas that are off limits. What you should do with human waste is actually different in different wilderness areas. In some places you're going to be required to use a wag bag and other places it's okay to bury it at least six inches deep. Some places require bear cans so you need to determine whether or not you need a bear can or a way to hang your food. Something else you might want to check on is whether or not campfires are allowed, especially out west. There are some areas where they just don't allow it at all all year. Some places have fire pits that are designated, so just make sure you check on whether or not they're even allowed in that area. If you plan to fish or hunt, you might want to check the fishing and hunting regulations and make sure you have all the proper licenses. And finally, if you're a dog owner, you want to check and make sure if dogs are allowed if you plan to bring yours. This is also a good time to research the environment and time of year so you can bring or acquire whatever gear you might need. The reason I have this in a few months out list is because if you need to buy something or acquire something, it's better to have a little more time, obviously. So you can vary widely by geographical location, um, which is why I definitely recommend reading blogs about the specific hike you're wanting to do and see what kind of gear people recommend bringing. Look up things like weather and water conditions during the time of year that you're visiting so you know what gear you might need to bring, how much water capacity you might need to carry, etc. You also want to make sure that you account for altitude. Conditions can vary greatly the higher you get in elevation, so if you're in Florida in July, obviously you don't need to worry about snow on the ground, but that's not the case in Colorado at 10,000 feet. It might be a good time to research the wildlife you might encounter if you're lucky enough to and what to do in the scenario that you encounter something like a bear or a mountain lion and the appropriate responses for each. If you're in grizzly country, for example, you'll definitely want to carry bear spray and have a good system for how to hang your food each night. Or even a hard-sided container to store your food in. Final thing that I always do a few months out is book any travel that I might need for the trip. 
If you happen to be local to the trail that you want to hike and it's a loop, congratulations, you have made logistics a lot easier on yourself. If not, there are a few things you want to figure out in advance and probably book. If you're from out of town, getting to the actual trailhead might be the hardest part of your hike. Luckily, a lot of popular hikes actually have shuttles to the trailhead, so be sure to look up if the hike that you're wanting to do has some sort of shuttle service that you can use instead of needing to like rent a car or something. Using a shuttle can be pricey, but a lot of times it's actually more affordable than renting a car and it's logistically a little bit easier. A lot of times really popular places will even have shuttles from the airport, for example the Grand Canyon I know has some options like that. Another option is using regular old public transportation to get as close to your trailhead as possible and then either booking a shuttle from there or trying your luck at hitchhiking. If you do end up booking a shuttle, just be sure to give yourself a little bit of extra buffer time in case you have any travel delays. Also always try bribing a friend in that area or searching local Trail Angel or Facebook groups and maybe you'll find a generous individual who is willing to take you to the trailhead. For example, in Colorado, I know a lot of people do this for the Colorado Trail um, and there's also areas and groups like that all over the country. Just always be aware that gas isn't cheap and it's a good idea to at least offer to pay for their time and gas money. There is always the option of renting a car, but I find that hard to stomach a lot of times knowing that it's just going to be sitting at a trailhead while I hike the majority of my trip, um, but it is kind of a last resort option if you need it. A side note, if you're doing a point to point in a somewhat popular area, or even sometimes not in popular areas, there's sometimes shuttle services that will actually move your car for you while you're hiking. For example, we did that in the Wind River Range in 2020, um, and it was super easy, um, a little bit pricey, but really quite reasonable considering um, all the time that they have to use to drive and move your car from one trailhead to the other. My next stage of planning always starts a few weeks out from my trip. There are just a few things that I like to check and not leave for the last minute in case they require some advanced planning. First, I always check the trailhead parking situation and I usually try to have a backup plan as well if it makes sense. Trailhead parking can vary quite a bit. It's everything from a nice paved lot right off an easy to access highway to a random dirt patch in the middle of nowhere that you need a four wheel drive vehicle and high clearance to access. Here are some things I always consider when I'm checking out the parking and travel to the trailhead situation. One, I always check if it costs money. Um, National Forest parking lots sometimes do overnight and they usually require cash. You wanna make sure you have that on hand with you. Second, can you even park there overnight? Some parking lots do not allow cars overnight and you need to make sure that if you're gonna leave your car there, it can stay there. Sometimes there's also limits for how long your car can stay in a certain place, um, so you wanna check that out as well. Usually it's 14 days in national forests, but you always wanna double check just to be sure. How big is the parking lot and can it accommodate large crowds? Um, if it can't, how early do you need to get there to make sure that you actually get a parking spot? And do you have a backup plan if it does fill up? Do you need a four wheel drive or a high clearance vehicle to get there? And if you do, do you have an actual full spare, not just the donut in case your tire pops on a big rock or something? Google reviews are a surprisingly helpful resource in this scenario. A lot of times you can kind of tell the conditions of the roads. Onyx also has some backcountry off-roading resources you can check out. And finally, like I mentioned earlier, calling a ranger is also always a good way to see what kind of condition the road is in. Another pro tip is try to map your destination while you still have surface and maybe screenshot your directions or have some other form of like paper maps or something because if you end the route while you're out of service, you might not be able to pull it back up again and then you might be in the middle of nowhere and not know where to go. Another thing I like to do a few weeks out if I haven't already for permit purposes is planning out my camping spots and my rough daily mileage. This is especially a good idea if you're going to try for walk-up permits so that you have a rough idea of your itinerary when you go and talk to the rangers to try and book those permits. Having an idea of where you might want to camp each night is good for pretty much any trip, especially if you're going to be doing things like high alpine passes. You want to make sure that you are able to do those early in the morning so you can avoid afternoon storms, etc. Campsites might be few and far between, and you want to make sure you have a general idea of where you're going to stay so that you can have the most fun on your trip. 
it's good to know if you're going to pass up the last campsite for 10 miles um, before you do so, obviously. Some campsites also fill up early, so you might want to know if you need to get somewhere early in the afternoon or if you can kind of take a more leisurely approach to your day. It's also not a bad idea for safety reasons to share your potential itinerary with friends or family so that they know where to look for you if heaven forbid something were to happen. Finally, a few weeks out, I like to also check the water sources on the trail to make sure I have an idea of if they're frequent or few and far between so I kind of know how much water capacity to take and also what to expect going into the hike. It also might inform the time of day that I hike. For example, in the desert, it's often common to wake up early in the morning and hike during the cooler part of the day. Um, and a lot of times I like to break at water, so I try and kind of have that figured out a little bit before I go. If you're in an area where there might be intense water crossings as well, it might be good to get a gauge on how the water is looking and the snowmelt is looking currently. Again, NPS has a great resource for that, and also you can always call the rangers to see what conditions are like. Finally, there are a few things I always do a few days out from planning any backpacking trip. Difficult stuff is done and it's kind of time for the fun last minute activities. Kind of obvious, but one thing I always do a few days out is check the weather to kind of get an idea of what I'm in for for my weekend or week long backpacking trip. I always check the weather for both the daytime and nighttime of all the days that I'm going to be out and that way I can kind of get a gauge on things like the temperature and how many base layers or how warm of base layers I might want to bring. This is also when I check the current fire regulations. I don't really ever have fires in the backcountry anymore, but if you might have a front country site, um, it's good to know whether or not there is a fire ban in effect when you're going. It's also a good time to check if there are any fires nearby the area you're trying to hike. Especially out west, fire season is becoming more and more prevalent and you want to know if there is a large fire nearby that might impact the course of your hike. It's also good to check and know if there's going to be a lot of smoke in your area and you might want to pick a different area instead. I'll also usually check again on the stream crossing and water situation just to see if anything's changed since I first checked. Um, usually if few days out is obviously going to be a little more accurate than a few weeks out. I also plan and pack all of my food which is pretty self-explanatory and honestly one of my favorite parts of getting ready for a backpacking trip. I also check my water filter and I back flush it if it needs it. Um, I make sure it's clean, ready to go from whenever the last time I used it was and that way I don't end up on trail needing to filter water with a clogged filter. I also put plenty of gas in the car. Keep in mind that you'll need to both get to the trailhead and get back. Some of them can be pretty remote depending on where you're going so you just want to make sure you have plenty of gas in the tank to get you both there and back. I print and bring my permits if I need them. Areas that require permits require that you have them on you, so just make sure that you have all of that ready to go. I also like to keep mine in a plastic bag or something to keep them safe from the elements. I go through my gear checklist and make sure that I have all of the gear that I need. I charge all of the batteries that I'll be bringing with me to make sure everything's topped off before my trip. Finally, don't forget to leave things better than you found them and have plenty of fun, even if it's mostly type 2. If you found this information helpful, please consider subscribing so I can keep making these kinds of videos. Thanks and happy hiking!